Hey, I'm Fred. And I'm Ed. And this is Create a Generation. Create a Generation of Hype. All right, Frederico, what is happening this week? <laughs> it's it's Lee. Lee's on the show this week. Lee, what is happening ah, this week? Lee, what is right, happening Fred, this you week? You did not join us this week. It was Lee. <laughs> got us. Just, okay, Ann, I will write the script for you. Just say, <laughs> Lee, what is happening this week? <laughs> it was Lee, and we are hanging out with Rush from Rush Light Invader. For me to animate, let's say, five seconds, might take me a good couple hours. It depends on like the animation, like how much animation I want to put into it, how much in-betweens. Just a quick note, this is a cut down version of this interview. If you want to check out the whole podcast, head on over to your favorite podcast platform like Apple Podcasts or Spotify, and you can check it out there. Let's get into it. Let's get into it. Welcome back to Creative Generation. We're joined by Rush. What's up? AKA Ru- Rushlight Invader. And Fred, I don't know, he was being cranky this morning or something. He didn't want to hang out with you, Rush. I'm very, uh, very sorry. It's okay. I have but- cooties. It's okay. I understand. I understand. <laughs> he was actually very rude about it. <laughs> I don't know what to tell you. I, just, I took a shower like three weeks ago. I'm, I'm, I'm clean. <laughs> but Lee's, Lee's jumped into the hot seat instead because he's much more interested to talk to you, I think. Okay, okay. Yeah, so- um, but thanks for joining us, and thanks for having a shower three weeks ago. <laughs> no problem. Thank you guys for having me. Hey, um, can you introduce yourselves to us? Ah, uh, let's see. Where do I start? Um, I just at the moment I just make um story time animations and just hang out on the internet. Brilliant. And you've got a, a couple of YouTube channels. You've got Rushlight Invader, mm-hmm. which is like your story time animation channel, right? Yep, like, yep. And then you've got Rushlight. Yeah, Rushlight's the second channel. It's mostly gameplay stuff. I uh, hired my friends to help edit. You've also got like a a podcast with a whole bunch of other other creators as well. What's that one about? Um, that one is with my friends, the Amazing and Laddie. We got together and made a podcast where we invite our friends and other guests to come, like animators to come over, and we just chill and hang out. So, Rush, where did it like? Where did this all start? Like, uh, I always wanted to draw as a kid. Uh, most, like, people that start drawing just keep pursuing it, and people, like, around me just encouraged me to keep drawing and stuff, right? And I was, like, out of art college, and I was, like, I don't know what to do, so I just taught myself how to animate, and uh, story time animation looked cool, and so, yeah. Do you remember the first thing where you went, story time animation, that looks cool. What were you watching, or who, whose channel were you watching? Do you remember? Well, when I first started my YouTube channel, I was like college. I started three of them at the same time. I started my main channel, Rushlight Invader. I made my first gaming channel, which was basically Game Grumps edits, so not very well edited, just footage of 10-minute segments uploaded. And while I was at college, I was still learning how to do the digital tablet. And I didn't know how to draw on the digital tablet, because I was all traditional up until uh, college. And I want to learn how to do digital and animate. And they didn't teach animation at this course. So I would um, take that digital tablet and draw Minecraft art for people. Like, I would get people to pay me to do Minecraft art. And also do fan art of, like, big YouTubers. And to help get my name out there. And they would, like, retweet stuff. And by, and then I met some people in the um, speed art community. Speed art, uh, Minecraft art community. And this one guy posted a story time. And I was like, oh, this is cool. I want to try this. And I tried it, and and then uh, I got into the, that's my first story time. Cause I also watched this thing called RTAA from Rooster Teeth. They did like um, they took segments from their podcast and people animated it, and it was like these fun little things. So I made mine like that, like blue shading like that. But then uh, then I posted it, and then some guy on Twitter followed me. His name was the Odd Ones Out, and I was like, oh, this guy's cool. He followed me. That's interesting. Oh, he does collabs. Let me just see if he wants to do a collab with me. And then that's how uh, I met that man. <laughs> hey, Rush, we've got to ask, just for those who don't know, speed art? Speed art is basically take hours of footage of you just drawing and it just speed it up and like editing software for like a three minute video. And that's like a great way to get known for your art online. Because you, you just post commissions on Twitter. Most artists do that. They just, hey, my commissions are open. Go check it out. What I did was like, I'll do a speed art channel with famous Minecraft artists or other famous people and just draw them. I'll tweet at them sometimes. Sometimes I'll tweet it out. But the comment section will always be filled up with, hey, can I hire you for an art piece? Half of them don't even, or like five-year-olds don't have money and will try to scam you. But there are actually some people that will actually give you money to actually like draw. So it's a good business thing to do for speed art is just to have a channel dedicated to that to get money. Another question then, because of the speed art, 
Is that why you called yourself Rush? Oh, no. No, um, my name's stupid how I came up with it. Well, we got to hear it. All right. <laughs> yeah, well, that makes it more interesting then. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, no. All right, so um, I was trying to figure out a unique name on the internet because having a unique name is very important on the internet because you type in on Google, it autofills, right? You want something that autofills. Like, oh, do you want this guy? It's like, yes, I want that guy. And it's also you want something that's typed out like you're the only person like that. So if you're like... Do licking dog um, and then it's like oh there's a lot of dogs that, that are licking out there what do you mean and he's like yeah well that's my name he's like that doesn't make sense but uh <laughs> so I was like drawing I was coming out for weeks just trying to figure out something and I was drawing a candle and my candles look cool there's this show called Digimon that had this candle mon. he always looked cool his design looked cool to me I'm drawing this candle and I'm like what are the synonyms of a uh, candle and I looked it up it was rush light rush light hasn't been used since the 1800s it's like this long ass candle little and you light it and it's whatever and uh I was like all right rush light sounds cool but it can't just be rush light and I looked at um invader invaders can be like the video games or like uh, a it means alien from like it can be like any alien from invader zim from piccolo from dragon ball z and I just plopped them together and that's my ridiculous name so I'm candle alien brilliant I love it that's great so you're you're here creating like niche speed fan art because it was mostly Minecraft. But then you also mentioned like some dude, odd ones out, just followed you on Twitter and you're like, hey, can we collab? And he said yes. Yeah. Simple as that. Like yeah. this is how these things work. I guess I was I was just balding enough. I was like, all right, this guy followed me. He likes me apparently. He thinks I'm cool or my content's cool. I'll just shoot him a DM. I'm like, I look, I watched some of his videos first. I was like, all right, I need to get to know this guy. This guy has a good amount of following. He seems cool. Let me just look at the videos. I'll watch the videos. Oh, he is cool. All right, he sounds like a nice guy. DM, hey, I see you do collabs. Hey, man, um, want to voice my video? And he's like, yeah, man, you seem cool. I'm like, oh, oh. That's back when he did collab with a lot of people back then. And I was like really excited at that moment. I was like, oh, oh. And I got him to do like two lines, and that was – not very well used. I did a Pokemon Go video, and that video is not evergreen. Does not age well. It does, people do not will rewatch that over time. No, that was a fad thing, and that ruined my uh, collab with him. Really? So at the time, was it okay? You were, it, it went alright, or? Well, that was my second story time, I think, and it, I'm still getting used to the story time genre thing. And uh, doing a topic like Pokemon Go, it's very like in the time because that's when Pokemon Go was very uh, popular. And uh, having him and in it did not help. Well, it helped a little bit, but over time did not help. People didn't. People don't go back to rewatch that video. People are still playing Pokemon Go, apparently. Oh yeah, yeah. So, uh, there's a couple of people I know that do that. There's a pretty good lesson in that. So, Rush, are you saying that would you recommend if people are going to do a collab that if they were going to decide on a trending or evergreen, do you think it's better to go evergreen? All um, for story time animation, probably mostly always, yeah. Like 80 90 percent of the time, probably do that. But if you're already established, it's like you can do whatever, right? But if you're like an up and coming person, you probably something that people always watch, come back to like a year or two down the line. Rush, like you've learned a lot since then, you've your channel's grown a fair bit. What, what do you, what do you, what are your videos like now? Like, what do you do in, in your Oh, I don't shade anymore. I learned that the hard way. I had my character had blue shading and then a yellow backlight around it, which I thought would make you stand out, look cool. Because like, oh, no one has shading. And then I found out drawing and shading takes forever. So I removed the shading completely. I was like, I'm not wasting my time. And so now I have a little bit more fluidity. I have more backgrounds now. So like you, you sort of touched on it, like this process that you've got, and it'd be really interesting to dive into that. What goes into making one of your videos, like an animated story time video, like? I just have I have a whole catalog, a whole list of like ideas I want to go through, and whenever I feel like I'll just write as I go along doing other projects. I'll just keep writing things that happen during that thing, and I'll just pick that one or something like that. I usually sometimes my friends call me crazy. I would write the script and then just start animat, just start doing the storyboard with the script. No voiceover yet. A lot of people like to do the voiceover um, after the script. I like to do the script and then storyboard. Because when I'm writing, drawing, and there's like a boring line or two where I'm drawing it, I'll be like, oh, that's boring. I don't know how to draw this. And I'll just, I'll be editing the script while I'm storyboarding it back and forth. And then I'll go and voice it. And if I add any improv that I think is funny, I'll just draw that frame in between or something like that. But uh, recently, I last two things I've been working on have pre-audio, like my friends and I goofing off. So I would have to storyboard the uh audio first because there's no script at all 
it's all like improv those two last two i'm gonna be doing i'm keen to know as well rush just in terms of the story time style did you go into it thinking i'm going to draw my own style or did you quickly realize no no if i'm going to be a story time animator i really need to modify my art style to fit in with the genre so i didn't want to like be bubble people like the got circles are more like easier to move around and animate like to do a turn a turn around it's easier to do a circle than it is to do things with a pointy chin because a circle is always con consistent pointy chin is not but i was like ah, i was, yeah, I was just i'm just drawing my style i didn't really think much about it i was like yeah this is what i want to do where's the genesis of this bubble story time animation character come I from like <laughs> I think once based off all the uh, original story timers, they all had like circle-ish heads, like uh, yeah. Swoozy, James, Jaden, they all have circle-ish heads. And like uh, Tim, Tom, and Adam, they, they came in as well around that time, and they all just have circle bubble boys. And so people would take inspiration from the bigger boys, and they're like, oh, it, and then they'll like try to put it on twist on it. I feel like as well, Rush, like your videos, they actually have certain elements which have incredible detail. Like it looks like it would take a long time to really get the composition and the coloring. And I think the color jumps out for me on your channel more than maybe some of the other Storytime animators. Was that a conscious choice to differentiate yourself by saying, look, I'm going to show every now and then I'm going to demonstrate how actually talented I am as an artist? All right. Uh, well, I was when I uh, redesigned my character, I wanted to redesign my backgrounds. And my backgrounds were boring blue. And it was disgusting. It was boring. Most of the backgrounds story time animators use are white. And I was like, all right. And then once I did this acid video, I was like, this is the time to do it. This is the time to change up my backgrounds completely. And so I got these like these texture blood brushes. And so I would try to went crazy. I would just, none of my backgrounds are proportioned. Like nothing makes sense. Like nothing is aligned, like perfect. Everything is just abstract drawings. Like that's a wall. That's a couch. It doesn't have to make sense perspective wise. And that's, I just make it messy as possible because I don't got time to make it perfect. What's that process like and how long does it take? Oh boy, sometimes it takes me like three months to upload a video. On average, three months on average. Um, because I got to write storyboard, then audio. Then I have to cut off the audio, trim the audio, figure out what I want to do. Um, so sometimes I'll improv and then add more stuff to the storyboard. And then I'll draw, and then I'll just blast music and just draw my, um, I'll line art my characters, like the keyframes. And then sometimes I add some in-betweens. And uh, at, and then sometimes I get bored with drawing. I just um, go over and Photoshop, do a background, and plop it over. And I'll like, take hours, just do one single background, maybe one hour, maybe 30 minutes. Get the colors right. And then I'll plop it down over, and I'll keep animating. So what does... Yeah, like how many how much, how many hours or, or goes into making like each second or each minute of, of a video? I don't know. Not exactly. But I know I work with 24 frames a second, but we drag out the second. So each frame could last like a whole second or more. So it doesn't, it depends on like the animation, like how much animation I want to put into it, how much in-betweens. Cause it'll take a good while. Like for us to me to animate, let's say five seconds, might take me a good couple hours, maybe five hours, maybe three hours, who knows? Just depends on how detailed it is or how much line art I need to do with how many characters moving around. It just all depends really. A question on time then, if you were to tell a an aspiring storytime animator, here's a couple of ways to shorten the amount of time it takes. So if there's any shortcuts that you learned from when you started to now, things that you know have saved you time during the process, what would be a couple of tips that you would say, look, avoid doing this and this, or if you want to save time here, do this instead? That's a good question. Having saved presets is pretty good. I have head shapes and my beanie is, is a shape I copy and paste constantly. Knowing the shortcuts to the key binds is good for your keyboard, like, uh, like uh, like G and B to switch between the bucket and the brush tool, so I have to keep worrying about it. And then less clicking around. I'm still learning the shortcuts myself, but it's it's all right. It's all right. I'm not too technical savage with the program itself. I'm still learning like the camera tools and like the symbols and stuff. But I'm like learning as I go. I use I reuse a lot of my backgrounds a lot, but I just change the hue sometimes, and then I'll draw elements in it, like a table or two, just to make it look different. And or I'll zoom in more, flip it horizontally, and just like make it your eye look like it's a different background, but it's not. Just so I have saved time to save, not doing backgrounds. Yeah, that's good. Hey, um, Rush, you 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 mentioned you know early on you did a collab with um, James Odd Ones Out, and um, but you guys have sort of kept close up. Was that after that? Like, how did you ended up working on that channel? Right. 
Well, I uh, I was in talks with him after that. Because after I collabed with him, I offered, like, hey, man, thank you for the collab. I get a follow-up email. I'm like, hey, thank you for collabing with me. The video's doing great. I appreciate it. If you need any help with your animation in the future, let me know. I'm, I'm willing to help, man. And he's like, ah, I'm good for now. Thanks, dude. And I'm like, all right, cool. So one day I had the inspiration. I'm like, what if I animated one of his comics? So I go all out in his animation. The line art's not the greatest. Like, I got better at his style over time. Like, this was my first attempt at his style. And I made it all crazy, different angles, sound effects, just going all out, going all out for him to, like, notice. I posted it. He loved it. Um, and then my friend Moz also put in a good word for me. He's like, yeah, Rush is great. He's a cool guy. And he's like, all right, all right, I'm looking to hire someone. And so he sends me an image. He's like, hey, Rush, color this for me. If you color it right, you'll see what happens. And I color it. And then I also took the same image and I made it like a de an ugly version, like green, like picking his nose and stuff. I'm like, here is the one you want. Here's the version I like better as like a joke. I made like, I'm, I just made it ugly and green, and disgusting. He's like, oh, they're both great. And I'm like, oh yeah? He's like, you're hired. I'm like, oh, sweet. What? And he's like, yeah, you're hired now. Congratulations. I'm like, oh. And then that's been like over two plus years ago. And I think my first video was the Fables video. Yeah. So Rush, if you were to say to anyone who'd never seen your channel, what's the one video that they should go out and watch right now? Which one would you recommend? Anything this last year. Um, let's see. The teacher video is pretty cool. I like. There's some cringy moments here and there. The vegetarian video is really fun because it's all improv, so it's more natural. But uh, I think the nat I think the vegetarian one's pretty good. Now, what about this? If there was one video that you've still got uploaded that you wish no one saw, <laughs> Dragon Ball Pooper. You know what's gonna happen now? That's gonna be the first one everyone goes to look at. Dude, it's already the most one of my most popular videos. The Dragon Ball Pooper one. You kidding me? I hate it. Is, is that one of the things where you sort of debate with yourself? Do I take it down, but at the same time, it's getting so many views, I can't? I constantly think about that. I'm like, does it hurt my channel if I take this down? Do I, what's, what do I lose? Do I lose more subscribers? I'm not making more content like this in the future, but maybe they'll like my other content. So is that the, the new channel for the future? The, uh, <laughs> the Rush Light Poop channel? That's, yep, that's it. That's exactly now nailed it, Rush man. Rush Light Pooper. Yeah, that's me. That's, that's me. pretty memorable. Rush Light Pooper. Say Rush Light Poop Invader, and that's just a different channel altogether. <laughs> Do you want, do we want to talk about uh, Twitch as well, Ant? Because I know with uh, Alex from Alex's Corner, she was talking about Twitch being uh, a bit nerve-wracking because, you know, with animation, you don't show your face, whereas on Twitch, you're showing your face. Do you like being on camera? Oh, I love being on camera. Yeah, it's really great. I like uh, just interacting with my uh, chat and hanging out. What do you do on your Twitch? I uh, I paint. every I, like on Every Tuesday, I've been doing a giant painting behind me. You'll see just a giant... The collage of memes. I just wanted to paint because I love to paint and uh, I figured this is the perfect time to do it on Twitch. For everyone who's listening, go check out the YouTube video of this and you'll see all the artwork behind Rush and it's fantastic. <laughs> yeah, and then sometimes, I, like, I have a schedule. Like some, some Thursdays I uh, would draw subscribers and then sometimes I'll play a game. And then every, every Saturday is a Minecraft thing, so I play a game with my friends. Just depends on how uh, the day goes. But yeah, Twitch overall is a great experience interacting with fans answering questions and hanging out and just badly singing with them. It's really great. They love it when I badly sing. Can you give us a sample? No way, Jose. Nuh-uh, not here. Uh-uh. <laughs> Come on. Just, you know, a little, a little teaser so if people can get a little sample. Like, I'm going to go, oh, I'm going to go see, see Rush. On no, 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 no. <laughs> a little. Uh. <laughs> Hey, um, Rush, we're, we've run out of time, unfortunately, but it's been a been, been a blast talking to us. But before we before we finish off, we always like to to get some advice from from our guests for aspiring creators. So, what would be your biggest piece of advice you could give to an aspiring uh, YouTube creator? Figure out the easiest ways to do things. Um, make a, finding a community that's a good one. Finding a community and other like minded friends to surround you with, so you can always push each other or like help critique each other or something like that. Get along collab with friends depends on what your kind of channel it is you know what i mean just uh just get yourself out there what else is there hmm play do smart not hard oh if you're animating don't worry about making it the best thing about animation is the story the story always comes first there's some people that have the like have terrible art style like casually explain is not the best animator it, or neither is great underwear or whatever those channels all those kind of channels are they're just stories and how they talk and it just really captivates the audience even Circle Tunes, who just has like a PSD, he has, he's on Photoshop, he makes his characters bounce up and down. He's hilarious. It's just, the animation comes last, I think. Overall, visuals and animation do come last compared to the story and how the like, audience like, connects with you, I think, the most. People, people sweat over the animation too much. That's great advice. 
Yeah, we've never had anyone say that before, so that's fantastic. Boom. Well, on that note, thank you, Rush, Rushlight Invader, or Rushlight Pooper. Um, <laughs> me. Thank you so much for joining us on Crowd Generation. Thank you guys for having me. Create a generation. Look on the mic.